Hello everybody, I am online after all. So up until about 10 minutes ago, I had no internet service at my house, uh, starting as late as last night. Uh, and I thought there was an outage in the area. I called up my provider and they said, no, there's no outage. It's, we're gonna send a tech out and the tech's gonna be there on Thursday. So yikes. Um, but good news is that it seems like there actually was an outage. Uh, because for services back online now, so thankfully, uh, or, you know, some other sort of weird bug or edge case kind of worked itself out. Who knows? Uh, I'm online now. If I go offline, it's probably because of the service issue. So, all right. So I was hoping to prepare last night for this stream and finally take out this integration testing once and for all, but I had no internet on my computer, which means I couldn't get to NuGet. So... Uh, you know, that's one reason why companies sometimes don't rely directly on NuGet. They have their own, um, their own uh, providers, their own package providers, which is basically a version of NuGet, just not NuGet.org. Right? Anyway, so I was, I was stuck because I wanted to uh, try, a, try a new approach to integration testing because I've been really struggling with test containers. Uh, not only does it just sometimes fail intermittently, uh, due to nothing that I'm coding, but then also uh, actually my, my tests seem to kind of not <laughs> want to cooperate either. So I'm going to try to take a, a new tack. I still want to stick to containers. I think that approach is going to make it easier for people who are wanting to try this themselves. Uh, certainly the backup approach is let's go out to Capella and create some structures there dynamically for the tests, run the tests, remove those structures. But of course, that, uh, that does require internet connection, which I didn't have until a few minutes ago. Um, and, uh, you know, in some situations that could require, um, you know, extra costs, incur extra costs. So uh, we're on the Capella trial, so it's not costing anything. And uh, that's not a big deal, but certainly in the long run, that's something I want to consider. So what I'm going to try today is I'm, I'm not getting rid of the other integration base class that I've already written, um, and I, I, I don't know the last version of this that you saw, but it's using test containers, and I put in a bunch of stuff to remove that GUID bucket in there because that was causing problems, create a conduit bucket, uh, add some weights in here, wait for the cluster, wait for the bucket, wait for query service, make sure the index engine is set, but all these things seem to be, uh, you know, uh, causing issues. So I'm probably still going to, to do some version of this waiting, but I, I feel like test container themselves is maybe it's too much overhead for a local, uh, you know, local computer like this. Maybe it'll work fine on, on GitHub workflows or, or some sort of build server. I don't know, but I feel like uh, I can do this with using Docker directly in .NET and that's going to reduce the amount of overhead and um, hopefully make this easier for for this to work. So, but I've got to do a bunch of uh, manual stuff myself, unfortunately. So there is something called, and I, I asked ChatGPT for this last night because I was just curious, but there's something called docker.net. I think that's what it's called, docker.net. Yeah, there it is, 12 million downloads, pretty well known. And uh, last updated in May, so this is an active package, so let's go ahead and install this. And I'm, I'm, I can't imagine that the test containers is not using docker.net behind the scenes, but anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna get to it. All right, so let's do some co-pilot here, and uh, I wanna write a uh, one-time setup, write uh, the, the code for a one-time setup uh, method that will uh, create a Docker image of Couchbase server uh, for integration testing. So let's see if this writes code similar to what I had explored yesterday with, with ChatGPT. Okay. All right, so this is a little different than what I saw yesterday, but let's see what happens. So Docker client, we'll start with that. 
It seems to work. So what was interesting yesterday is that there was some uh, connection string that I had to put in there, a Docker connection string. Um, but it uh, doesn't seem to be the case, so maybe that was, maybe that's old, I don't know. Couchbase latest, so I probably don't want Couchbase latest. Let's go out there to Docker Hub. I want to pin this to a specific version, um, for now anyway, because uh, latest means it could update to 8.0 at some point. So I'm going to go with Enterprise 720. If I can copy and paste that. Okay, this is the latest version of Enterprise as of right now. Okay, what else? So now it's got these create parameters where it's um, getting all these uh, ports. Port bindings. Hey, Tail Learn Code. Welcome. Thank you for the subscription. Great to see you. I'm happy to be here today because I was really struggling with internet connection. So port bindings doesn't seem to be available. Okay, so I'm going to tell it, tell it that. Say port bindings. Um, what's the error message? Uh, there's no definition for port bindings. So what's new with you, Taylor and Code? Guy from Mars, hello. Thank you for joining. Uh, okay. Wow, this is actually not helpful. Uh, it's just saying, yeah, it's not defined. It's probably in there somewhere, but it's not defined. So, okay, let's, let's try this again. Little report bindings, what should I use instead? Wow, okay, so this is interesting. This is the first uh, time I've run into Copilot just saying, I can't, uh, I can't do it. Just trying to get moved into the new house. That's cool. I, uh, I don't envy you. Moving is always stressful. So that's a bummer. Um, so that doesn't work. There's exposed ports, but I don't. That's not quite the same thing. So I don't know. Okay, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna try it with ChatGPT instead. ChatGPT. Today starts the painting. Oh gosh, painting. Uh, so I I bought a house from the late '50s, I think, and I don't think it was a problem, but we were concerned about uh, uh, lead lead paint. So we basically had painters come in and do every surface inside and outside and uh whew, that took a long time <laughs> uh, and then and we're putting in new cabinets so we had them paint the cabinets and it was just so much so much painting you know we don't have a really very big house really it's a it's a one-story ranch uh 1600 square feet ish something like that unless you got the basement and it just you don't realize how much there is to paint until you start painting, so yeah, that's no good. All right, so let's ask uh, ChatGPT to do it. Your house is old, but you also hired contractors. Yep, you know? and I mean, it was hard for us to find people to actually do it as well. Zavi boy, hey, hey, first time, welcome. Good to see you, Zavi. Hope I'm saying that right, Zavi, Zavi. Glad you're here. Trying to knock out some integration testing that's dogged this project since the beginning. <laughs> and just want to get something working so I can go on to uh, you know, actual feature code. Yeah, okay, so this is saying do it as part of the CI, like GitHub Action Pipeline. Uh, security vulnerabilities, I don't see how it's going to be security vulnerabilities. Uh, using Docker in a integration test. I don't quite see how it's going to be a security issue. System command execution. I could see why that might be a concern if, if you can inject something into system command, but um, let's see. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is not what I want. This is not using Docker.net. 
This is using like, yeah, CMD. No, no, I don't want that. No, 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 no. Okay, so, so rewrite it with docker.net. We're approaching the point where this is actually taking more time than just going and reading the docker.net um, documentation. Let's see. Yes, this is more like what I saw last night when I was researching this. So uh, let's go ahead and just start. Mm -hmm. There's the client. So then this part right here, this is a, like a connection string to Docker. Now the issue with this is that this is specific to Windows. So this won't work if we deploy this to Linux, which I probably will. So I need to address that at some point. But let's see if everything else works first. Pull the image. And it was Couchbase Enterprise 7.2.0. Uh, oh, tag is separate. Okay, new auth config. Is that, do I need credentials to pull from Docker? I don't think so. Create container. Uh, interesting that this is actually in the image here too. Oh, because, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, a name DB. So I'm gonna call this something like DB integration. I don't actually need a name. Probably, if that's optional, I'll just cut that out. Those look like the ports that I need. There are more ports for different Couchbase services, but that's all I'll need for integration testing, I think. Okay. All right, so there's, and then starting the container. So I feel like this is very similar to what test containers does. Now there might be more, there might be some waiting involved in there. Um, Cause this creates an image, but doesn't actually configure it like with a, administration credentials, uh, doesn't create a bucket, um, you know, the, the services, that sort of thing. So that needs to be done by me as well. So I actually put on a little coffee before I started the stream. So I'm going to be right back and I'm going to come back with that coffee. So coffee wasn't going. I have a machine that's uh, half regular coffee maker and half like a Keurig cup coffee maker. And I pushed the start button, but I had it in, in uh, carafe mode. So no coffee. Shouldn't have to have coffee before you're able to use your coffee machine. Too complicated. <laughs> anyway, I started it off with the, I have a few uh, cups, uh, Keurig uh, pods, so I'm, Get one of those going. Womp womp. Hey, what's up? It's Calvin. How's it going? All right. So how do I... Next thing I want to do is I want to um, set up the Couchbase cluster. So I'll just create a method for that. Now, how do I actually... Uh, how do I use the... How, how do I connect to that Docker image, Docker container. So I have, I have the uh, yeah, Couchbase client, okay. Yes, that's what I wanna do. Docker container using the Couchbase SDK, yeah. What I kind of wanna know is how do I get like the connection string from that um, Docker container. Yeah, see, this is not good. Localhost, that's not what I want. I don't want to hard code localhost. So how do I get, uh, 
This is the, what is this? This is container. Container ID, what else is in there? Let's see. It says response, so I don't know. What is what is in there? ID, warnings. I know that's not very much. I'm wondering if this might be another thing that test containers does is give me a connection string and everything. Client containers, create container. Okay, so is there something like client dot containers dot like git get container stats logs archive hmm <laughs> container parameters client container start container wait client containers dot what get containers create attach inspect list so these are all like docker uh, commands inspect container and I can just pass in container dot ID and uh, no, no, is that optional? I don't really pass it in. Yeah, okay. All right, so then I can inspect what? What do we got? Hosts, host path, maybe? Network settings? There's also path. So I just kind of want to see what's in there. How do I go ahead and Just want to run some. Want to run this in the browser, or in the browser, my test runner. So I can set a breakpoint and see what's in there. Uh, this is need to be. Uh, this need to be a test fixture. All righty. Now I can debug. See what happens. Oh, I don't have Docker running. That's going to be a problem. Right? Unambiguous timeout. Huh? I'm not doing anything with Couchbase yet. Why is it giving me that error? That's weird. There's nothing using Couchbase. Well, anyway, it's got to start Docker. Come on, Docker engine, let's go. Okay, Docker running. Now I should be able to run this. Maybe. What is that? We've got Napalm684 with the follow. Hello, Napalm. Welcome. Uh, why isn't my... Nothing's happening. So no Docker images are happening. And no code is running. I'm guessing it's going to time out. Is that what's happening? There we go. Wow, that, that happened. Maybe it was downloading it? I don't. I thought I already had downloaded though. So there we go. So there's the image. And let's see what's in inspect. That's what I'm mostly interested about. So we've got uh, hosts path. That's just a directory. Path, entry point, yep. 
I'm looking for is like a, kind of a URL to connect to this thing. Mm, I smell like coffee now. Uh, there's this there's this name network settings I mean, okay there's gateway that's, I don't think that's quite what I'm looking for IP address let's just see what happens if I try to connect to that I don't think it's gonna work port 8091 yeah, that's not right. <laughs> I mean, maybe it is just localhost. I, mean, I, I guess I could try that. I mean, there it is. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for the link on LinkedIn. No problem. Uh, I don't remember connecting to a napalm on LinkedIn, but uh, <laughs> happy to do it anyway. <laughs> Whatever your LinkedIn name is. Okay, so let me let me ask let me ask ChatGPT this, this question here. So, uh, is there a way? Uh, is there a way of using? Um, a, uh, what are we talking about? Docker, docker.net, is that right? Docker.net to get the connection string from the image instead of hard coding localhost 891. Let's see what it has to say. Typically use localhost, an exposed port. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 891, okay. You'd probably have a configuration file or environment file, correct host and port for the service. See, that's not what I'm trying to get though. I'm trying to get this all done in C Sharp. All right, time for some coffee, I'll right back. Okay, coffee is working this time. Got a nice big mug of coffee. Nice big Kalahari mug. Here we go. Okay. Replace localhost name of, so using the link flag. I don't want to do this link because that is a legacy feature. Um, application of Docker. Yeah. Okay. Linked container name. You know what? I could just try localhost for now and uh, we'll go from there. So, in that case, it is, um, I want to say, cluster awaits cluster dot connect uh, local, well, couch base localhost. Well, I can't actually connect yet because I don't have um, login and password. So admin login, admin password. So that's something that needs to be set up. Uh, there's not a default uh, credentials when you start running a Couchbase image. So uh, time for this. So let's... Um, how can I set up a new Couchbase cluster um, from C Sharp using HTTP API, using the Couchbase HTTP API? Let's see what it has to say. Okay, 
See, no, this isn't going to work. That sets up a cluster object in C sharp. But it doesn't set up an actual cluster. Um, okay. Um, maybe setup isn't the right word. How can I um, initiate? Initialize? Nope, still not figuring it out. Okay. Um, so this is going to require some documentation reading. I think actually I might be able to look at some of Brant's code because he he kind of does this. You know, maybe I should use Couchbase Fake It. Uh, after all, this might make things easier for me. Um, the thing, this is not an official like Couchbase supported image. Hey, speaking of, there's Brant. Brant, I'm struggling with test containers, and so I'm thinking about just using Couchbase Fake It and Docker.net. Um, I, I plan to go to GitHub Workflow to run these integration tests. So I was kind of wondering, this right here, this connection string, would that work in Docker Workflow, you think? Because I don't, I can't think of a way, to, I can't find a way to pull the, you know, the host name from uh, docker.net. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. Brant is an expert in this type of stuff. And he's the one who created Couchbase Fake It. Uh, it's not an official Couchbase, like, image. That might be my only hesitation about using it. But it is, this is made for... Um, integration testing, I think, um, among other reasons. I mean, it's like reducing developer friction to help get up and running faster with, uh, with uh, you know, a more configured, more opinionated couch-based image. So I could just do this. Again, I might not want to use the latest tag uh, let's go this one, and but I'll just do latest for now. And I put this down here, like so. So you need to either run the Docker image in host network mode, or have some way to control the container host name. So is that different than the the Docker image name? because I can specify the name here. Uh, okay, so anyway, set up the cluster. All right, so when I use fake it, I can actually pass environmental variables to it to specify lots of things. Name of the cluster, how much RAM, etc. And there's lots of good defaults as well. So username, password, or administrator password or the default usernames and passwords. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I need to do now is go in, go in here to this and connect. I know it's administrator and password. You use Docker Compose, which registers container names as host name so you can reach them. Hmm. I'm trying to see if I can do this all in C sharp uh, inside a end unit test, the setup, configure, test, and tear down. That's that's my ideal. So let's uh, connect to a cluster and then I will wait until ready with a uh, 30 seconds. Okay, now things I need to do is I need to set up a, uh, let's see. Uh, is there anything? So bucket configuration is done via a JSON file. 
So this is if you're you know, creating your own kind of, uh, using this as a base image sort of thing. Uh, I can actually create uh, buckets via C Sharp, um, which is uh, bucket manager is cluster dot buckets. That's not a sync, is it? Nope. So then I can say await bucket manager dot create bucket async. And I'll call it conduit. Oh wait, that's that's the settings. Bucket settings and bucket type is bucket type dot couch base. Yes, and um, I need a name of conduit. Num replicas. I'm just going to keep those at zero. Um, is it RAM? RAM quota, 100 is fine. I think that's all I need. That's all that's required. Everything else has default values that I don't care about for integration testing. Uh, now I can... Google tells me the test container has a host name property you can read. To build. Yes, so that's with test containers. <laughs> and I'm actually struggling with test containers. So I'm trying a different approach. So with test containers, you can just... With Couchbase test container, I can just say get connection string. Uh, but this, for multiple reasons, is been a problem, and I've been struggling with this. And I'm trying to see if it's test containers or if it's something else. Uh, and so I'm going directly to Docker with Docker.net to see if I can get that to work. Okay, and then the bucket is await cluster dot bucket conduit create that field up there mm -hmm. and then I'll do a whoops wait until ready Spend up from seconds 30 okay so this is setting up the uh, so this couch base fake it does a lot of the work then I'm connecting to the cluster, waiting until it's ready, and then uh, creating a bucket for the tests and waiting for that to be ready. Uh, so let's see if that actually works. Just to test that out, I can say bucket.ping, and uh, we'll see that, you know, just see what's in there. I just want to run a debugger on it. Result is not null. So I want to set a breakpoint there. And, oh, and mm, I also need to tear this down. Uh, so let's see. How do I... Uh, what? Uh, is it destroy? What is it? Uh, I guess. Let's destroy the image in. Uh, the one-time teardown method. So hopefully it's this still following the conversation. Stop and remove the container. Stop and remove and remove the image. Uh, okay, I don't necessarily want to remove the image. I want to keep that uh, cached. Let's see. Uh, I'd see if you have a host network mode switch you can flip. If you turn that on localhost will work. You'll just be limited to a single CB container instead of cluster. Yes. For these integration tests, I I only need the single container. This is all. This is doing a lot. Okay, I don't need to do all these things. Um, clients dot containers stop container, and then it is. Do I have the container up here? Uh, yeah, this should be. This should be a local as well. starting it and this is going to stop it what else do you need uh, no that was what I was, I was doing before so it said stop container and um, remove container right should be a wait and, uh, contain nope not cluster Client.containers.remove container. Mm-hmm. 
ID and no parameters. Okay, so this is stopping the container, and then this will actually remove it. Now it doesn't. I don't want to remove the image because I've already downloaded the image. It's kind of like a cached copy. Because I'll be using that again. Now if GitHub workflow decides to remove the image because there's a certain context, well, I can't do anything about that. But uh, for my local testing, I want to stop it and then remove it. So this might actually be slow. I don't know if I actually have a local copy of, of fake it. So this, this first time might be slow. Maybe I'll just step through the whole thing. Okay, where is Docker? Still running Happy Shaw because I didn't actually stop that. So I'll go ahead and stop that one manually and delete that one manually. So here's DB integration. It's created. Um, not really going anywhere though. Looks like the program stopped. Okay. Docker API responded with status, internal server error, driver failed programming external connectivity on endpoint, port is already allocated. Okay, because I had the image there already. So let's do this again. Debug. Okay, so there's a connection, which I need to worry about this connection string, but we'll do that later creates uh, the image. Um, okay, I think I already have the image, right? So now we'll create the container. There it is. It's created. You know what, I'll need to start, start the image next. Yep, that's the next one. Start container, this one. Okay, now it's running. This is actually going pretty fast compared to test containers. Okay, and then I'll set up. So let's step through that. So we're going to connect to the cluster. Hopefully that works. Seems like it's working. It's waiting till it's ready. Uh oh. Couchbase exception. Authentication failure exception. Okay. So, what's happening there? This is not working. Seems to be working. And there's a, there's a default bucket, that's interesting. Um, that's, okay, so it must be creating a default bucket automatically. But why isn't it connecting? It must not be waiting long enough for that to happen. Hmm. Unless I made a typo, of course, that's always a possibility. Okay, I'm just deleting that manually because it never got to the cleanup. Okay, so is there a typo here? Administrator, password, I don't think so. So why isn't this wait until ready working? No, oh, that, this won't work until I'm actually connected. And so if the, if the credentials aren't ready, then it's not going to connect, right? Hmm. Okay, so let's ask this. Is there a way, is there a way to check to see if a couch-based cluster is ready via HTTP? Get pools default. Okay, so I can just do this. Let's give this a try. So this is actually going to ping this endpoint here which does not need credentials, and then it will see if it's ready. Um, 
So what I can do then is set up some sort of janky loop. Uh, if is ready, then we're going to break out of this loop. Else we're going to have to wait. Let's wait, I don't know, one second. That seems reasonable. So this is going to, well, I don't probably need this outside of the loop, do I? Uh, so it's going to ping this endpoint. If it's successful, then I'm going to say that it's ready. Uh, if it's not, sleep a second and then try again. So let's see what happens if I do this. Let's see if this helps. It is kind of janky, but integration tests are sometimes kind of janky. Just the way it works. Okay. Oh, the ping didn't work. That failed. Unable to read data from transport connection. Hmm. So if I try this myself, what's going to happen? Oh, it's asking for credentials. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, I wonder if that's because it's asking for... Hmm, okay, well, there's got to be a way. And I thought, I thought Brant's container did this. Um, let's see. Scripts. Configure node. I thought there was something that, uh, like, wait for services, maybe? Configure node, run fake it, wait for services. Is the bucket ready? And knit node. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Something like this. I thought I was doing these things already. Hmm. I feel like it's it's doing it. It's just there's some sort of delay. And I don't want to just do a bunch of sleep and hope and cross my fingers. I want to actually test for something. Hmm. Well, let's just put in a 10 second delay, see if that does the trick. I don't want to leave that there, but I want to see if that's, uh, if that's what does the trick. And if so, then there's something else I can test for, I'm sure, to wait on it. Oh, I got it. Remove. Whoops. Okay, and trash. Okay. Uh, you know, I should probably put this in a try catch loop. That way it'll always No, I don't want finally catch. Dot fail. So that way the test will always run and then it'll do the teardown. So I don't have to keep doing that manually. Okay, so there's the sleep. 10 seconds of sleep. I'll take 10 seconds of coffee. Oh, my, my background is really looking bad. Ugh. Okay, uh, can we connect now? I think it might be working. Let's find out. Nope. Authentication. Am I entering it wrong? Am I typing it in wrong? Oh, 
this is where the exception is anyway. So this try catch didn't do didn't do anything. So I still got to stop this and delete this. Hmm. I could just. <laughs> Here's what I could do. Uh, see if that works and put that in the try catch. And if there's an exception, I'm going to go to sleep for a second. And um, if there's no exception, then uh, oh, let's see. Connection working. Is connection working? We we'll assume it's false to start with. And then if we get this far, we'll say, uh, no, it's connection. Okay, I got phrases differently. So is connection, uh, is trying to connect? Yes. And then is trying to connect? We'll set to false here. So if it actually gets to this, then that means the loop will stop the next time around. It's actually connecting. So it's going to keep trying to connect until it connects. Um, probably should put a, uh, a limit on the retries, right? Max retries. Let's just call it 10. Okay, and max retries. Uh, let's just call it retries. Retries equals zero, and while retries is less than 10. So retries minus minus here. So this way it only try 10 times at most. All right, uh, let's do it. Seems kind of janky, but better than a thread dot, just a raw thread dot sleep, I think. What? I thought I removed it. Okay, let's try again. Okay. Is trying to connect true? Retries equals zero. So all those things are true. We'll try to connect. We're going to wait until it's ready. And. Okay. So, exception. Subtract retries, wait for a second. Oh, it shouldn't be subtract retries. Now retries is a negative number. <laughs> should be retries plus plus. That's, that's okay. That's fine. Okay, is this going to connect this time? Doesn't seem like it. Seems like it's taking longer. Time, it's a timeout this time. Okay. Let's try one more time. Let's see what happens. There should be plenty of time. Let's, so I actually have the container running, so let's open it up in the browser. And just to double check myself, I'm going to copy and paste from here. Connects. Connects just fine. So what is the problem with this? Why does it keep timing out? That's an unambiguous timeout exception. That's different exception than authentication. Huh. 
Hmm. I might need another cup of coffee for this. See, this is one of those issues where it's like, okay, I need to get up from my desk, walk around the house, get a snack. Uh, hey, Taylor and Co., thanks for stopping by. Good luck with the interview. Or should I wish them luck? <laughs> Have a good one. We'll see you around. This is one of those issues where definitely getting up, taking a walk, doing something else might shake something loose in my mind where it's like, what is the problem here? So first of all, this needs to be plus plus. That's not the issue. Yeah, I might need to go start making another cup of coffee. Man, I got what's wrong? Is it because I'm too close to the computer? Is that why the screen screen is being a problem? All right, I'm gonna get some more coffee, or at least start some more coffee. I will be right back. Okay, second cup of coffee is up and running. I turned on some room lights as well. I just, I don't know. I think I need to adjust the chroma key on that. That's actually looking a lot worse. There we go. So it's that one. Oh. Okay. Well, that's probably the best we're going to get for now. All right, so what is the problem here? What is the problem here? Unable to connect because of authentication. The second time around, it seems to be a different error. All right, let's just, let's just run it. No breakpoints in the setup. Well, until afterwards. Ah, gosh, I keep forgetting that. No breakpoints until here. Okay. Let's go. It's going to work this time, right? So I didn't change anything. <laughs> so obviously work this time. Mm -hmm. 
Everything's running. So it's probably just retrying here over and over again. Setting the breakpoint. Doesn't seem like it's oh, probably in the middle of a sleep. Mm, what's going on? Okay, nothing's happening. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Yep, doesn't seem to be doing any better. All right, let's stop this one. I got another idea. Let's move this out to here. So I'm not even going to check until authentication succeeds. I'm going to try to wait until that happens. Uh, just see what exception is actually being thrown. All righty, I'm going to delete this guy again. Let's go. Oh, hey, it actually succeeded. That's interesting. Is this the problem? The wait until ready async? Is that the issue? Seems, seems like that should work. Oh, what's going on? Oh, it stopped. Unambiguous timeout exception. Hmm. I don't know. Let's just comment that out and see what see what happens. Seems like that should work. That shouldn't cause a problem, but it is. So let's see what happens next if I try this. Oh, now what have we got? Service not available exception. Service is not configured or cannot be reached. So, oh gosh. Hmm. Well, uh, this is not clearly a productive way to go either. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Test containers, I really think, was the, was the way to go. But um, there's another possible route, I think. This is Couchbase Examples. And this has something I think I worked on this. Did I work on this? I don't know exactly. But this is using GitHub Actions, or GitHub Workflows, whatever. And let's see what it does. Wow, it's doing a lot of stuff. 
in the workflow. Well, the, so this is fine for workflows. The problem with this is I, I can't really run this locally. I mean, I think there is a workflow tool to run locally. Hmm. So this is doing some sort of build step, checking memory for free. That's interesting. And what's doing that? Setting up Couchbase, set up .NETs, uh, restore dependencies, build, test, report status. So it's doing all kinds of stuff there. This is where it's creating indexes and stuff, and this is where I'd want my migration uh, classes to run. I don't want to actually have to create collections in here as well as in my uh, NoSQL migration uh, project. Hmm. So if I go back to, this is my test that's using test containers. Case, lowercase, uh, number, symbol, something like that. So let's let's try this. I don't know. I know this this was this is struggling. Yeah, I'll shoot. Now I've got this one probably interfering. So this is what test containers creates. <clears throat> but it's not even gotten to the test code yet. This is all base class code. I haven't really got it to come here very successful, very often successfully. Every once in a while, the test will actually run, but uh, that's obviously not good enough. Yeah, see, there's another error. So another unambiguous timeout exception. I just I, I suspect that whoa what happened there? I suspect that there's an um, issue with memory or or something locally that's causing test containers not to um, not to execute very well. So I can there's actually the WSL config file. Uh, I think I restrict memory to. Four gig. Yeah, you can see right here, four gigabytes. What if I just updated this to use eight gigabytes? You think that would solve the issues? Uh, so I'll shut down Docker. WSL shutdown. Okay, and uh, let's bring up Ubuntu just to start WSL back up. Okay, and then if I bring up Docker, see, I'm already starting to feel. <laughs> Uh, resources being used up. So VMM is the process here that uh, Docker is using um, to run those images. So it's already 2.2 gig. Uh, it's going to get it's going to get bigger once I start running containers. But I'm going to go ahead and kick this one off, and then I'm going to get that cup of coffee. It should be done by now. Be right back.
That's right, 2.1 gigawatts. So far, no images are even appearing yet. I don't know what's happening. I didn't, I wasn't out in the room that long, I guess, but whoops. This test still running, but no image appearing in Docker. Nice big cup, nice big Kalahari cup. I like the big mugs. It's the same amount of coffee but I just like the big mugs. So there's actually a setting on my coffee maker that's like uh, regular or bold. What is the difference? Does anybody know while well, this is running and hopefully working? Regular versus bold coffee machine. What is the difference? This is the exact one I have. <laughs> So what does bold mean on a coffee maker? Uh, stronger cup of coffee, okay. How? It's going to extract more caffeine from the beans? How? The water to coffee grounds ratio is increased? Again, how? It's the same amount of water. <laughs> okay, this looks like uh, chat GPT generated uh, page. So, okay, what does the bold setting do? Extends the brewing cycle, prolongs the hot water retention in the brewing chamber. Okay, so it, the water is in there longer, I guess, in the little K cup chamber area. Okay, whatever. I, I always said it's a bold. Oh, hey, what have we got here? Is it, it's null? Why is it null? What the heck? Now something completely different is going on here. No image has been created. I'll tell you what. I am just all about the struggle with these test containers. Harry Potter and the Chamber of K-Cup. What is... What am I doing wrong? See, the images aren't being created. Do I need to restart Visual Studio or something? But uh, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. I mean, that's what I'm about to try. So notice my memory usage is now pegged to 8 gig, which is what I gave it. I don't know what it's doing with all that memory because there's no images being run. It's just it's just grabbing it and reserving it. What, what's going on here? So it seems like I made the problem worse by giving it more RAM. All right, we're going to restart Visual Studio. I don't know what else to try at this point. I guess I could try Writer. Okay, Visual Studio, Conduit. Yep, look at all these images. They're all there. No containers, though. And Visual Studio usually takes up a big chunk of memory, too. Um, I've got everything else closed down. I've got my local couch base off. I've got my local SQL server off. I've got uh, signal off, which isn't a big deal, but it does take up. Um, it's a, one of those uh, Electron apps, so it takes up a lot of RAM. WSL. WSL is on, and that's what, that's what it's using. That's what this VMM is. It's just slurping down a lot of memory. Well, it looks like it dropped off from 8 at least. All right, I'll try running this again. Let's see if the images actually get created. I don't get it. Now they're not working at all. Huh. 
Ah. Where is where is it doing? It's not creating the image. Stop. Try this again. See where the breakpoint is happening. Okay. It just it just stopped right here. It just completely gave up. <sighs> well, I think uh, I'll have to go to plan D at this point. <laughs> Gosh, the problem with plan D is that it, it uh, relies on someone else's computer for these tests to work. But I suppose that's better than nothing. We call it couch-based integration test two for now. Okay, we'll do the one time setup. Okay, don't need house, don't need, don't need that one, but I do need to connect to a uh, cluster. Wait, connect? No, cluster dot connect async. And this is going to have to be a Capella connection string here. We're going to make a user called integration and some sort of password. So that has to be set in app settings, I guess. Probably environment variables would be the best way to go if I'm going to run this in uh, GitHub workflow. But uh, yeah, it's going to be similar to what I was doing here, right? Uh, I want to get config. No, what I was doing over. Oh, okay. Holla, holla, we dem boys. <laughs> or is it hola, hola, we dem boys? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, dem boys. Glad you're here. And uh, let me know in the chat if it's hola hola or holla holla. So I can pronounce your ridiculously long name better. <laughs> okay, now uh, I was getting uh, configuration. Where was I getting that from? Right here? Yeah, the super hacky way. Okay, this is what I want. Config builder. <laughs> 